is agreed to, and I call the member for Warringa. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. This bill contains several Treasury Amendment law, um, law amendments. This bill has several schedules, but today I will focus on reforms to the Australian screen production incentives. On the 30th of September 2020, the government announced a media reforms package, which is a massive overhaul of the supports offered from the screen content sector. And these reforms will have lasting ramifications for Australian film, documentaries and television shows and how we portray our culture and Australian identity to generations to come. The reforms will focus on producer offset legislation. It first introduced in 2007, the Tax Law Amendments Act 2007 um, was designed to encourage investment in Australian film, television, documentary programs and increase the producti productivity, output and growth of the screen industry. According to the explanatory memorandum of the Act, the legislation was introduced at a time when the industry was striving to meet the challenges of a rapidly changing global market. And the producer offset portion of those reforms was at the time a major new support mechanism to assist producers being competitive and responsive to audiences um, as, as well as create sustainable production businesses. The producer offset is a refundable tax offset for producers of Australian film. Currently, it provides for a 40% of expenditure offset incurred making feature film and 20% of expenditure for TV series, documentaries, animation series or online content. And guess what? The legislation worked. In the 14 years since the Act was introduced, the Australian screen content sector has grown into a remarkable industry which has made an impact across Australia and in international markets. The industry employs 30 and a half 30,500 people and contributes over $5.34 billion to the economy. The industry also helps attract tourism. Uh, over $725 million of tourism expenditure can be linked back to Australian content of the entertainment industry. I'm lucky to have in my, in my electorate of Warringah many content producers from cheeky little media, Kapow Pictures, uh, Spark Pictures to Flying Bark Productions, these producers are making world-class content here. But since the industry has matured, it's now grappling with the major technological shifts. Audiences are now primarily using online services, especially uh, specifically streaming video on demand like Netflix, Prime, Stan and Disney+. 71% of Australians have at least one subscription to a streaming service. The annual revenue for streaming streamers subscription is a sizable $1.8 billion. There are benefits to this shift, including that producers are no longer reliant on established media gatekeepers, such as the, uh, theatrical distributors or broadcasters to reach people and make a return on investment. However, in, a, in the aggregate, because there are no content obligations on streaming services, Australians and people overseas are losing access to Australian content, which has tangible and intangible benefits for our society and our culture. Australian content matters. The stories make us who we are. They make us come to terms with well, who we've been, who we were, who we want to be. Um, they tell the important stories. Who could forget household names like Bluey and Home and Away? Uh, they've gone international. Throughout our content, we broadcast to the world what makes Australia, Australia. And we need to do all that we can to continue to foster and broadcast Australian stories and support this industry, which is so important to our culture, society and economy. Stories like Bluey and Home and Away only exist because our unique system of local content rules and government support. However, with the massive upheaval that is occurring at the moment, the government is modernising the regulatory framework to make Australian content and broadcasters competitive in the digital age. And that is coming with disruption for our content producers. I accept that we need to modernise our regulatory regime but we also need to be sensitive to parts of the industry that may be left behind. 
And as part of the government's reform for this sector announced last year, where the government is harmonising the producer offset, which will be 30% for all formats. It's increasing the threshold for feature length content supported through the producer offset from $500,000 to $1 million. It's removing the 65 commercial hour episode cap for drama series. It's removing the ability to claim production costs incurred in other countries towards the producer offset, also known as the Gallipoli Clause. I welcome some of these measures. Welcome the increase to the producer offset rate to 30% and harmonising it across formats. This will provide additional funding for TV production in particular. However, I've received so many much feedback and representations from constituents and companies in this sector about the impact of these changes. Constituents that are award-winning journalists and impact documentary makers with significant contributions to Australia and to our culture. Some of the films you may have seen, like My Year of Living Mindfully, The Crossing, they worry the changes will impact their ability to make impactful documentaries going forward. The risk, the loss of regional Indigenous voices and the unique stories of our Australian explorers, adventurers and scientists and entrepreneurs. So firstly, the primary concern is that by raising the threshold on the producer offset to productions of over $1 million, it leaves productions in the mid-range between five hundred dollars to 750000 in significant uncertainty. And my constituents believe that up to 58% of the documentary productions in the country will cease under this new threshold. Secondly, they argue that the change to the Gallipoli Clause may act as a deterrence film and documentary producers to hire Australian staff for these productions. Instead, overseas crews will be hired as it's financially cheaper and better for those productions. Thirdly, a separate constituent, a writer from the writing industry, they feel the removal of the overheads as allowable expenditure will materially reduce the benefits of the 40% rebate. But this could further erode support for a sector which has already been hit so hard by the pandemic. To offset the impacts of the reforms the government has offered, $30 million over two years to support the production of Australian drama, documentary and children's film and television content has been announced. Screen Australia has also received $3 million to establish a competitive grant program. But let's be real here. These supports are not enough to compensate for the proposed changes. The government shouldn't walk away from uh, what more needs to be done and the changes to the threshold and the Gallipoli Clause, or at least make exemptions for documentary makers. Documentaries are so vital in raising awareness to issues and really bringing that depth of knowledge to the Australian people of so many, across so many fields. In addition, we need to look at how we regulate streaming services. I've been inundated with emails calling for content rules to be extended to streaming services. We urgently need to update content regulations to ensure that Australians continue to have access to new, diverse Australian programming on the platforms they actually use. I understand that the government has placed an initial requirement on the streamers to report on how much Australian content they broadcast and that the government is considering a 5% content requirement. It's, however, well short of what the industry needs and are calling for. In Canada and the European Union, they're proposing a 30% local content requirement. Australian content producers are calling for a 20% requirement. It is a sustainable level for a total quota on all on streaming services. And it would make it internationally competitive. So the Australian screen industry desperately needs the Morrison government to start listening, like start listening to its calls of what is needing. It is undergoing structural change. I accept that we need to modernise the regulatory regime. And things have, have to change. <clears throat> but that doesn't mean that we should be leaving significant and important parts of the industry behind, in particularly documentary producers. We need to think carefully about the changes to the producer offset and the Gallipoli Clause. These changes will leave lasting changes to an industry that's already been devastated by COVID. To keep pace with the changing way Australians view content, we must look at extending content quotas to streaming services. Without this support, Australian content will go into structural decline and we will be the worst for it. So 
So I do call on the government as a matter of urgency to regulate streamers so we can protect what makes Australia unique, our culture and our history and our storytelling. Thank you. The question is that the amendment be disagreed.